See how much better she's getting at coming in now. One thing about cows is they're not necessarily the smartest animals, but they do learn routine very well and they like a routine. Something they can follow, something that they can look forward to. It's good to get them into a good routine and it makes life easier on you as well. So here we have the baby out here hanging out in this little pen he can play in while mom's being milked. And she's not as concerned anymore. She knows he's been here, she knows he's safe, he's not going anywhere. And so now she'll just focus on eating her food and we can easily get her milked. Now one thing I like is I've got one of these hunting buckets. It's got a nice soft cushion for a seat. And it actually rotates and spins back and forth and uh, I like using that for when you're hand milking. We're gonna wipe the teats down, and then we're gonna strip them. We're gonna take a few squirts out of each one. So if you're thinking about getting a milk cow, there's a lot of things to consider. I'm going to talk about a few things, and in a later video we may go into everything more detailed. But right off the bat, it's a commitment. You're committing to milking this cow usually twice a day for however long you're going to be milking her. Which means it doesn't matter if it's 30 degrees outside like it is this morning, negative 20, 100. If it's your birthday, Christmas, it doesn't matter. The cow has to be milked twice a day. Now there's obviously, you know, ways where you can wean them down to once a day milking and you can keep the calf on them and all those things. I won't go into detail about that, but point is, is you're committed to that cow. So if you're thinking about going on vacations, who's going to milk the cow? You don't want to leave that cow unmilked for more than a day because there's a lot of things that can happen. She can get mastitis, her milk production will start to go down. Uh, there's just a lot of things. It, start, it starts to get painful for her. So that's one of the biggest things to keep in mind. Now obviously, there's a whole topic on the type of cow you're gonna buy, what breed of cow you're gonna buy. So that's something else you need to consider is how much milk is this cow gonna produce? We run miniature Jersey cows, great homestead cows. They produce a good amount of milk, but not an overwhelming amount of milk that you don't even know what to do with it. You got milk coming out your ears, you got so much milk. And the way most dairy cows are bred these days is to produce massive amounts of milk. I mean, eight or nine or 10 gallons of milk a day. And who needs that much milk unless you're feeding 10 families? So these miniature Jersey cows will produce usually two to four gallons of milk a day, which is a, is a great amount for a homestead family. You can have milk to drink and make butter and cream and cheese and all sorts of other things. And most of the time they can be hand milked. But when it comes to that, a lot of times it has to do with the temperament of the cow too. Are you dealing with the cow that's been milked before? Is this her first calf and she's never been milked and has no idea what's going on? Um, so there's so many different things you've got to think about. Now, talking about the miniature jerseys, they, like I said, are a great homestead breed, but they're very hard to find. There's not very many of them out there, and they're very expensive. So that kind of has to factor into whether you want to do that or not. And of course, there's other breeds like the Dexter breeds. They're not as gentle, for the most part, as the jerseys are, and they don't produce as much milk but maybe that's a good option for you if you've had one that's very gentle and you can, you can milk them and all you need is a gallon of milk a day and there you go. Now there's some that will produce more than that, but um, the jerseys are great because they produce so much cream and that cream is what's valuable. The cream is what you can use for making your butters and your creams and ice cream and everything else. Also, if you're thinking about buying a, a cow, 
I think their temperament, if it's one you're going to be milking, is really important. The problem is, is most of the time when somebody has a really good cow that they can milk really easily, they don't sell it usually. A lot of times you have the ones out there that people don't want to deal with. Or, like I said, they're really expensive. So then sometimes you're looking at buying a calf, which is good because you can spend a lot of time with that calf, get to know that calf, and, and make sure you gentle it down. But there's a long time before you're gonna be able to milk that calf when it gets old enough to be bred and then nine months later when it has a calf and you could be talking years down the road. So there's a lot of things to consider. We get people that'll email us or call us say, hey, I'm looking for this cow with this, with this, with this and that and I want it to have this and that. And you say, well, I wish you the best of luck because there's no such thing as a perfect cow. You have to know that too. Some cows are just going to have their little imperfections or quirks about them, but you want to look for the important things. So, like I said, she's got decent length in her teeth, but they're not the longest, but they're doable. Um, and to me, one of the most important things is their temperament. Are they gentle? Are they easy to be around? Are they safe to be around with the kids? Those kind of things. Oftentimes when you're thinking about getting a cow too, there's some investment in equipment when it comes to a cow. A lot of times people will buy a cow from us and they we deliver it to them because they don't have a trailer. They just have a makeshift fence that they've put up and they don't have any equipment or any way of milking a cow. Which a lot of these cows can be just milked out in the middle of the pasture with some feed in front of them and and uh, and you can go ahead and just milk them. But, uh, but, but for the most part, some of these newer cows or ones that haven't been milked very much or especially heifers it takes time for them to get used to it they're probably going to kick you for a while they're probably going to move around jump around and this is just the safest way for us to be able to do it now this is definitely not what you need this is just what we use to work our cows so why not use it for milking our cows as well so it's safe my wife and kids can get in here and milk the cow and and they're not going to you know she's not going to fall over on them or anything she's nice she's nice and secure in here and, it, and it's great but I've milked cows out in the middle of the pasture I've milked them in a shed I've milked them in a I mean I in a trailer I've milked cows all over the place and a lot of times this is whatever you can do with wherever you live and whatever you have and uh, you know there's a lot of different things and we can go into that in more detail in a later video and um, I'm gonna clear out of the way because she's fertilizing right now and I better go ahead and hurry up and get her milked because I'm taking a long time for one talking and one other thing you might notice is I don't have a milk pail with this cow I'm just using a jar and milking one hand at a time and you can use a milk pail if you want I found especially with these cows that are just just freshened and um, you know, they may be wanting to kick at something or or uh, just move around a lot. It's just easier for me to keep control of this and the milk and I can get it out of the way quickly and, and I can keep it clean. And if she starts going to the bathroom, I can move it out of the way real quick. So I found that using these quart-sized ball jars can be just as easy to use to milk. Now one thing to remember is if you are using these glass jars like we're doing to milk, you've got to be real careful not to drop them on the concrete or somewhere where they might break. Most people will use a pail, but, and we're about to put this cow on the machine. We're just doing this right now because we can keep the milk clean. A lot of times when you have a pail on the ground, if they kick it, it goes everywhere. You get dirt and stuff into it. It takes a little longer doing it this way, but we're able to keep the milk really clean. And another, another thing to think about as far as if you do buy a milk machine, um, there's an expense there. Some of, them are, some of them are cheaper, but if you want to get a decent one, you're going to be spending over $1,000, maybe, maybe up towards $2,000, depending on which one you want to get. And, um, that's just, there's some things that you got to consider. The cow is, is, 
is one expense and people think, well, I'm done once I bought the cow, but you've got to think about feed. Um, dairy cows are bred to pr produce milk, obviously, but they're bred to put most of their energy into producing that milk, not putting on fat and muscle like beef cows are. So a lot of times they need extra feed of some source to help keep the weight on them because they put so much energy into producing that milk. So if you're somebody that may not want to feed grain, then you may want to consider one of the crossbred cows, something that may not be putting quite so much energy into producing milk, and maybe they're more crossbred, they're not going to produce as much milk, but they're going to keep the weight on better. Um, some of these straight up dairy cows, right out of the dairy, they're feeding those things so much just to keep their milk production up and to keep the weight on them. So uh, those are some things to consider too. You've got to think about what the best thing for the cow is. You may want to have a grass fed diet for that cow because that's what's best for you, but is that what's best for the cow? It may or may not be. You have to, you have to look at it and decide. Um, you have to look at that cow and say, is this cow need, does this cow need more feed than we're giving it to keep the weight on it? I think she's and when, done. And when the cow gets too skinny, what those problems, like those people are like, why is this cow not coming back into heat? Oh yeah, and that's that's the other thing is once the cows get too skinny, it gets hard for them to get bred back. Um, there's a whole snowball of effects that things that, that, that can happen with them. So it's important to watch their weight. We've done grass-fed beef. We've done grass-fed um, for a long time. We've done that, but we're not against feeding the cow what it needs to be able to to keep its health, health to be able to keep its weight on to be able to be healthy and whatnot so all right so we're going to turn them out today uh, she's been getting better at her routine let them go back out to the pasture now and stay out and then we'll start just bringing them in each time it's time to milk instead of keeping them in the stall so now she can get out and babies good to go running around strong so I feel better about them going back out and we got a nice safe safe pasture for them to be in it's got a good fence and, uh, and they're excited to get back out thanks for joining us today if you have any questions or comments about your first family milk cow feel free to leave a comment below and as always subscribe and ring that bell